Hey guys, welcome to Biology Professor. Today I'm going to be summarizing some news articles about how red pandas are two species, not one. I've seen this uh, research been summarized in a few different publications now, but I'm mainly going off of one that I read in Newsweek. The original research was published in the journal called Scientific, excuse me, Science Advances. And so what do they do to determine that red pandas are made up of two species instead of just one? Well, we've got a, ton, uh, a team of Chinese researchers. They use whole genome sequencing. So that means that they extracted the DNA from um, cells from 65 different red pandas from different populations across the red panda range. They were mainly looking at uh, Y chromosome DNA and mitochondrial DNA. That's the DNA that we inherit from our father and mother respectively. So they looked at seven separate populations and determined that there were two separate species represented there that separated sometime around 220,000 years ago. Um, so we've got the Himalayan red panda uh, and the Chinese red panda, and they do have distinct ranges. And so you might be asking, was this surprising? And the answer is not really. It had kind of already been um, expected for a while. They were already considered two different subspecies and um, they also differ in appearance. For example, the Chinese red panda has like a, a redder face and has more distinct bands on its tail. But now we finally have the genetic analysis to back it up, to show us that these two different um, subspecies are actually two different species. And so you might be asking, well, how did they form into two species? Well, like I said, um, it happened about 220,000 years ago and the two separate species kind of went their own ways when they were separated by a river. So this is a form of allopatric speciation. Um, if you are interested in learning more about allopatric speciation versus sympatric speciation, you can check out my video on those topics. But basically, um, allopatric speciation, speciation is when you have two different species that are geographically separated in some way. Um, either by a river, as in the case of these pandas, or perhaps there is, um, you know, deforestation that separates them into two different forested areas with an unforested area between them, or like a gorge forms. For example, there are two different species of, I think it's squirrel, one that lives on the north side of the Grand Canyon, one that lives on the south side of the Grand Canyon, and they were separated by the river uh, forming that canyon, you know, millions of years ago, and eventually did, did, um, form into separate species. So that's allopatric speciation. Sympatric speciation is when you have um, species that uh, diverge despite being in the same location. So again, you can check out my video on that topic if you're interested in learning more about it. So what else did these researchers learn about the red pandas? Um, first, you need to know what a population bottleneck is. A population bottleneck is when you have a really sharp reduction in population size over a really short period of time. This can be um, caused by a variety of things. For example, if, a, if an infectious disease wipes through uh, a species and kills 80% of the individuals of those species, then that would be a, a population bottleneck because only 20% is left. Um, something like um, um, like drought or famine or um, a new predator coming into an area or um, climate change. Basically anything that has a sudden impact on a species resulting in having its numbers sharply decrease. That's a population bottleneck. And it's important because when you have a population bottleneck, it typically reduces the genetic variety of a species by a large degree. So if we go back to my previous example, if you had 80% of, of the individuals of a species die because of infectious disease, the 20% that are remaining will probably have less genetic diversity, so less variety in the types of genes and the types of genetic mutations that they have, which means that that species might not be as stable anymore. Um, and so what they learned is that the Himalayan red pandas have experienced three bottlenecks and only a small expansion afterwards, meaning that this species has lower numbers and lower genetic diversity, whereas the Chinese red pandas, that's the other species, has experienced only two population bottlenecks and a larger population expansion. So it has higher genetic variety and a larger population size. So of the two of them, the Himalayan red pandas would be the ones that are most at risk. 
And so why is all this research important? Well, the red pandas are already endangered. Um, even if they were just one species, that one species has low enough numbers that it's already considered endangered. Um, this is due to habitat loss, poaching. Um, as their numbers have dwindled, there's been a lot of inbreeding. Um, and so you have a situation where you've got only a few thousand red pandas left and um, losing more every day. And so this research, now that we can realize that they're actually two separate species, those two different species can have individual conservation plans developed for them. So they can have the have individual protection plans and conservation biologists can work with, um, with zoos, with governments, with locals to make sure that the different, um, the two different species of red panda are both being protected. And it will also prevent crossbreeding in zoos. So you won't have a Himalayan red panda and a, um, a Chinese red panda being, you know, uh, being mates in a zoo situation because now zookeepers will realize that they are separate species. So that's it for today. What do you guys think of the red pandas? They're, um, they're cute little animals. Um, their faces are a little rodenty for me, but um, otherwise they're really pretty, really pretty red fur. Um, and so what do you think about the fact that they are two different species and what this means for conservation efforts? Let me know in the comments. Bye.